What's going on guys, I'm the Inhuman Beatdown, and welcome to a brand new episode of Real Thoughts. This is the series where we tackle extended opinions and thoughts of the game I did. We did. There's two of us now. We're going to be tackling Monster Hunter World, and I have at least one of the co-op partners, Krem, for this. Hola. He only speaks in Spanish, get used to that. Technically, you speak more Spanish than me. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah. We're going to go through basically some of the stuff because we left out actually kind of a lot of stuff from the recap thing, despite the fact we had the time to go over it. But, eh, you know. Fuck it. Yeah. So I guess let's let's get to the main thing really quick because I feel like we could just summarize. We could summarize this one real quick without going too depth into it. Let's talk about the story that shouldn't be. Ah, the story that shouldn't be. Yeah. I mean technically for speaking monster hunter the they never really had a story it's only been used as a as a way to get you from point a to point b it's never been there to bring you in yeah that's that's kind of what they did here it's basically just a giant excuse to go hey go to this point look there's a giant monster there you should go hunt it it's kind of similar to a fake grand order because you know it's just like uh points like uh, we need something to fight, so here's some dialogue. Enjoy. Yeah. But at least with there, uh, at least characters, while maybe not in that particular section, have extended character and personality traits. The one thing that bugs me about Monster Hunter is that its story, like, aside from the monster aspect, is so flat because I'm supposed to... I'm clearly supposed to care about Handler and her, like bond between me as my partner he says in quotation marks but the problem is handler doesn't even have a fucking name she's just yeah. handler everyone doesn't have names they have titles it's like the admiral the admiral's grandson uh the the captain the handler uh, excited fiver uh exti or serious handler <laughs> I, they don't have names, but you know what's crazy? That most of these characters were actually from the older games. So they have history, but yeah. none of them have character. <laughs> I think which that's crazy. I think that may be worse. I know. <laughs> Made worse is they actually have some really good fucking voice actors to voice them, but I just can't get invested to give a shit about them. Especially in the last scene. Oh, yeah. It's where like, the guy gets hit, and it's like, oh, no. Guy. Yeah, or it's like the handler is like, oh, I have a bad feeling about this. And I'm like, I barely know enough about... God, to quote from Epic Rap Battles, I barely know enough about you to diss you. <laughs> the, a lot of these characters actually have... I don't know how you'd call it, like... A quirk. Yeah. Like, uh... Emon shot met that guy. Yeah. Like one of his things. All these characters are defined by their quirk or trait. Handler is she likes food. And the other two characters that are literally named after their quirk, Sears Handler and something else. Excited Hunter. Yeah. Because that's literally all they act like. Yeah. I think it also doesn't help that they barely do anything aside from the cutscenes, but you don't really see them do anything only, only like the uh, Sears handler she's the only one who actually appears on a hunt and that was during the first Zora Magdoras fight yeah other than that they don't show up yeah I mean other than that the story is okay uh okay at least in showing the monsters it's a good excuse to go hey look there's this big terrifying oh my god it's gonna fucking kill us have fun you're on your own which definitely is a big i would say probably the biggest point to the game and it's like biggest selling point is the monsters are really fucking cool oh yeah especially in a high res detail oh yeah I mean, I'll take your word for it. I have a tiny TV. It all looks the same to me. <laughs> and YouTube's going to bit crunch it anyways, so. <laughs> I mean, it looks better than the other ones, because most of those were, like, on um, the fucking PS Vita or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's right, because, uh, 
Or on like the, yeah, on all the handhelds, and also never in English for some dumbass reason. And it didn't stop people from playing them. That is true. I've played a couple in Japanese. Hell, I've played Monster Hunter Light games in Japanese, like uh, fucking, uh, is it Lords of Apocalypse? Hey, either way. Um, but yeah, the the monsters are all really cool, and I like their introductions. I, I kind of feel though the magic is a little bit lost when you've killed them 27 times. You're just like, it's like that first time. You remember when it's like, oh, look, it's a devil Joe. Oh, fuck, it's a devil Joe. And then it's just 20 times later we're in like, okay, another devil Joe, I guess, wants to come and die. Just sharpening the blade in the distance. I mean, some monsters do keep that magic like devil Joe. Because every time we'd be on a normal hunt. Yeah. We'd see him be like, oh, shit. Yeah, at least when he shows no. up then. It's a surprise, yeah. but otherwise it's just like, all right, let's go hunt our fourteenth Rathalos. God, our, our fuck, our, our fuck, I still got PTSD from the Devil Joe hunts. <laughs> we still need two more scalps. Yeah. No one knows this, but every time, like after recording, he'd be just like, "Hey, can we go hunt this Devil Joe? Why? I need his armor." Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's the that, that's I actually got a, a lot of comments like why don't you just collect those materials right there? I'm like because you can only collect materials or fucking kill people so many times before it becomes boring. That's why like I think the the less interesting videos are the ones where we just go on random hunts to kill stuff. Man, if we did record all those hunts, this series probably be extended by another fucking 4 or 5 months. Probably. It would probably go to the end of the year. God, that, that's crazy. <laughs> On the topic of story, though, and this is what I really wish we had brought up in the actual thing, so I could have also gotten Voss's perspective in this, but he's busy now, and we can't get him. Uh, Cuff. The tracking missions. Can we talk about those? The literal giant just stop signs in fucking progression. Yeah. They, they're they just... I think the reason they put them there is for... Hey... Go grind out some monster materials, upgrade your shit, and as you're doing that, you will hopefully progress this. Yeah, but that's the problem. That's the only way I can see it, though. That's the problem, though, is the hopefully. Because I think we did a couple where I just didn't find any, at least on the path to the monster. Where it was just like, alright, I killed this monster, but I didn't... I don't feel like I achieved anything in doing it. I mean, aside yeah, from monster or... materials. That's just one of the things. And sometimes you don't even know where they are. Yeah. You just wander around. Like, you find some tracks, and then you could go for at least another five minutes before finding another set. Yeah. It's like, it wasn't so bad when it was just one at a time, but those last three together at the exact same fucking time is the most annoying thing known to man. <laughs> yeah, they, they have no reason. It'd be interesting... If they kind of implemented something similar to that with the regular monsters, like you yeah. had to find like, hey, if this tree got torn down, what caused that? Go find it. Yeah. Instead of people like telling you, do some a, real tracking. Yeah, it would have been a lot more interesting to actually track the monster. And I think the one thing I also hate about the tracks is they just seem to randomly spawn. There's no real, it doesn't seem rhyme or reason in most cases because it's like, one track will go off a fucking cliff, and then the next track is, like, going in a completely opposite direction somewhere else. And this is a bipedal creature and not a flying one. So it's like, well, where the fuck did it go? You want to know what's fucked up? Hmm? All the investigation tracks are preset. That's annoying. I know. That's just one of the downsides, I suppose, yeah. to... Cause to, cause they probably this is probably something people in Japan or like the Eastern market are used to. Yeah. But like this is our first, this is the Western market first Monster Hunter game technically. I mean, we've had other Monster Hunter games. Yeah, but this is like a this is a major one to get yeah. people in because like if you looked at like Monster Hunter GX or whatever the hell they have out now. Yeah. Most people wouldn't want to be into that. Which reminds me, and does segue into a good part. Uh, so, from my understanding is, this is this is currently so far the most, at least at the time I think when it came out, the most 
new player friendly game and even then it's still questionable on how friendly it is for new players if my experience was uh, any indication yeah it's supposed to be one of those mixed games like hey let's get some new people in but keep the old ones too yeah and of course you couldn't get you can't make everyone happy yeah uh, i think the hardest part i think was for uh for me at least was learning new weapons because that was kind of a hamper i mean you can go to that training area to really learn it but i don't think there was ever really a tutorial aside from a quick splash screen to explain some of the moves and combos to a new weapon I've actually, the game actually, for me, explains tutorials horribly. Yeah. Because I all my weapons I use, I did not know how to use at all. I had to look up fucking guides and videos to understand how this shit worked. Yeah, that's how I was, I think, when I originally was using the Twin Blades. That's kind of why I switched to the kin set, because it was, it was very simple. Okay, tag the monster, the kin set goes to it and brings back an element, depending on where it hit the monster. The elements do stuff. Press button, fly in air, mount monster. Very simple. Yeah, and if you look at the charge blade, that weapon is actually a little more complex because you have to hit the enemy, fill up your vials, use your vials to charge your shield. You gotta repeat the process again, charge your sword, repeat the process again, and then you have to switch into axe mode, and then you can use your ultimate attack. Yeah. That's a long fucking process. Yeah, that sounds way complicated. And I tried using the long-range weapons, like the bow gun and the uh, the other stuff, and they were interesting, but I never really felt 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 like I truly understood how to use those weapons properly. Like I don't think ammo types or anything else was explained very well. No, that's something like you have to go a fucking spreadsheet find. Yeah. So despite that's for like hardcore people. Yeah. So like, des so despite its emphasis on trying to get new players in, I'm still playing with a knife. By the way, I don't know why. Um, uh, you are going to cut yourself one of these days. I swear. It's already happened. Again. Um, there you go. Um, but despite trying to be like new player friendly, it arguably comes out a very mixed bag then of trying to trying to help new players, but also just confusing them in the process, which arguably may be worse. I know I was definitely confused when I first played this. Oh, yeah. My, my first couple tracks in, I think I did okay. Is like, also when I played the uh, the beta that was out, when we streamed that, I kind of understood what to do, and I kind of got the gist, but you can tell I clearly had no idea, and I was relying on fucking Tuturu and Marthy to carry my ass. Yeah. The, I think the game lacks for my real tutorial, because if you look at most games, like... I haven't seen anything about Spider-Man, but I assume like there's a good like chunk for missions that says, "Hey, do this, try this out." You can't progress unless you understand how this shit works. Oh yeah, literally like through the first couple, through like the first thirty minutes or so, it will constantly tell you to press button to web swing or how to dodge, timing for dodges, and it has an entire glossary section that you can just pause the game, look at, and see all of your move list and a video accompanying it to tell you what the move looks like. Yeah, the only thing Monster Hunter does, it will throw you into a fight, and if you're like, well, I get my ass kicked, I guess I have to go to the training area. And the only thing that place does is give you basic combo lists and nothing else. Yeah. It doesn't truly explain how stuff works. Although, I will at least say, at least from my experience, that... And I'm not sure about, like, the DLC monsters or a lot of the challenge quests or whatnot, because I imagine those would be way harder but at least for story mode i found that it was not hampered by just choosing one weapon and sticking to it so it's like i went with the uh, twin blades but i switched up to the kinsect glaive and i stayed with that the entire time admittedly you guys also change your weapons but i didn't feel too punished for just picking the same weapon and sticking with it there were times in certain monsters where it would have been like a lot more to my advantage had I had a more long ranged weapon, but I didn't feel that I was just completely boned for not having one. Yeah, and I think that's a downside like the future game had problems with. Like with the DLC monsters. Yeah. Because most of them you need a specific 
gear and resistances to even have a chance of fighting. Uh. So you're not missing out on much when you don't play. Yeah. That. That's that's kind of where it ends into like the uh, the downside for me too. It's like I get the entire idea is to like farm all these things, get these materials and stuff like that. But God, if there's one thing that that will always gets me, and I was I still found it funny that Voss said one of his favorite parts of this was the grind, it was because I don't think anyone has ever said in any JRPG or any kind of anything that the grinding was their favorite part of these of the game. Because yeah, no fuck grinding. <laughs> Because admittedly, I get that it will get you to better gear and better rewards and stuff like that, but it's still a very tedious and mind-numbing experience to get to. And it doesn't help that the game is an RNG-based system, so you may not get the loot you need to get that shit. So you might spend fucking hours on one monster just to get that one material. <laughs> hey, Krim, Devil Joe scalps. No, no. Because, <laughs> you know how long it took me? I mean, so you know Kushala de Ora, right? Yeah. You know how many times I had to kill him to get his full set? At least 20. 53. Jesus Christ. That's how long it took me. Were you just missing one thing of his or something? Yes. Damn. That's how, like, bullshit the RNG is. Yeah. Because you could spend so much time just to get one thing, but it's so rare. And I understand that's not like a Monster Hunter world thing, that is a Monster Hunter thing, but that's still, you know, just something worth mentioning here. So I, yeah. I know if I didn't say that, someone's gonna be like, um, it's always been like that in all of the games. I mean, that doesn't- This could have been the game they fixed that though. Yeah, where it's so easy. I kind of wish breaking parts actually yielded better rewards or at least more consistent rewards. Like, okay, you broke off its tail, you get its tail. <laughs> You broke off its tusk. You got a fang or something. Because it's like, I pull, like, I cut, like, at the end with the unknown thing, I cut up its tail, and I think I managed to get a claw. Yeah, that's just another weird thing. Because stuff you cut off is also RNG. Yeah. Or even the stuff you break. Like, if you broke the horn, you get, like, a 40% chance that you get a horn drop. It's not guaranteed. Nothing yeah. is guaranteed in the game. That is kind of annoying, especially when you are just looking for that one piece. Because I remember, I, th I think this is off screen, but there was one time we were uh, fucking hunting Diablos mm -hmm. one time, and we were trying to get his horns. You remember that time? Oh, yeah, yeah. We were trying to get the, uh, yeah, the, the, sh yeah, the, the twisted very... or majestic. Yeah, the majestic horn was what I was trying to get. Yeah, but we always kept getting the other one, the twisted horn. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was was not a fun time for grind. No. Ah, uh, I. I can't. I. Uh, and of course, the other thing, though, uh, that it's like I can both see the arguments as to why they did it, but at the same time, has having played the game, I don't. It makes it annoying that they did it. The implementation of that you can't join a fight until you've seen the cutscene or that the person playing the fight has seen the cutscene because that really kills multiplayer where the point where I'm like alright I'm preparing for a quest I have to go see this thing well if anyone who wants to play the quest they will have already have to have played that mission and then they'll have to wait for me to see that point so they can join in I kind of get to a degree why they did that but at the same time I hate it because it does make for these awkward times of all right, party members, you guys wait here. I'm going to go look at this monster, then you guys can help me. All right, I'll see you guys in five minutes. All right, I guess we're going to sit here with our thumbs up our ass for five minutes. Yeah, that, that kind of kills a pace if you're with a group. Yeah. Although I'm sure uh, for some people, they probably enjoy that because then they're like, oh, I can spend time fucking organizing my shit. Yeah, I guess to agree that to a degree that would work, but that would still also require that they've beaten the mission or at least seen that part as well too. Which at that point, it's like, if you have to do them together anyways, why not just let them be in a group and see it instead of just going, all right, you guys all have to go play the same mission separately so you can see this point and then join back up. Either that or it leads to a lot of, I've seen this now, quit the mission, come back, join up with team. 
And not to mention, if you... So, if, like, if you had four people, they all started fresh. Not only would you all have to each watch that cutscene separately, you'd all have to beat that mission individually as well. Yeah, it's it's like the problem that Gom and Tom had when they tried co oping the game. They couldn't do it because they weren't aware of that. So I think that I think eventually it just led to them like trading off on who got to see the cutscene at what point. Like they all recorded it, but they would just splice it in at certain points. So it'd be like Gom is seeing it for the first time, and then you'd see the cutscene. Next battle, it's Tom's captured footage of the monster and then Gom joining in to fight it with him or something to that effect I don't remember but yeah because that was their problem because they were both fresh and new to it and they're like well we can't do that well fuck yeah the definitely pace cover that system yeah and they have had a year to potentially fix that but they left it in yeah Admittedly, it could be something to do with the source code, and that's not something you can just easily fix without just, like, remaking the game. Fuck it, Monster Hunter World 2. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm waiting. You say that, but once this comes out, you watch. There will be an announced Monster Hunter World 2. will be more profits. I mean, technically, we only got fucking DLC on the way. True. And but... who knows if it's going to be the last... And I can't really speak for the DLC because I didn't do it because it's like, uh, I had a decent enough time with the game, but uh, it's uh, it's really not my type of game. It's like, maybe if I was just casually playing, it would be a lot better. But for a Let's Play, <laughs> it's a little uh, different, shall we say. Yeah. Because there's a lot I mean, of... Uh... <laughs> There's a lot of, hey, look at this. We're filming. We're filming. All right, 27 hours later. All right, guys, we've now killed enough of these things, and we're all do we're, uh, we've all done a bunch of stuff. You guys have now finished the game twice in this time. All right, let's do this. On to the second level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, unless you've got anything else to finish up with, uh, I don't really have anything else. Uh, I have said my piece about the game. Yeah. It was good. Could have been better, though. Yeah. At least it's not Monster Hunter for the PS2. I've played that. I'll play it, are you? Oh, God. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no, 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 no. I played it once because my ex rented it, and she was like, oh, this looks cool. It's a big old monster. Do you know that you control fighting in that game using the sticks? Oh. Or is it you move using the sticks, but fight using the D-pad? Either or sounds like a difficult task. Yeah, it was not good. Let's just let's just say that. Yeah. But yeah, um, I guess with that said, though, that'll be it for now, guys. So until next time, I will catch you all later. Asta.